I'd like to share with you my research into a simple but fundamental question. <laughs> Why are bugs disgusting? This is actually kind of a profound question, right? I mean, you hear bug, uh, the typical reaction is yuck, but that doesn't make any sense. Because as you all know, uh, as you heard earlier this evening, uh, we evolved as insectivores, right? This goes back to uh, the very earliest primates, which were insectivores. Uh, many primates today are almost exclusively insectivores. So this is our evolutionary heritage. There are actually linguistic relics of this heritage even today. <laughs> so why is it that in our modern industrial society, uh, insects are not widely eaten, despite the many strong health and environmental benefits it would provide? Where did this very much ahistoric feeling of disgust come from? The answer is in the history of human population growth. Throughout the bulk of evolutionary history, mammalian insectivores uh, were not an ecologically dominant factor. Uh, but over millennia, a tremendous amount of other biomass has been replaced by humans. So there's been this tremendous shift from all of this formerly dominant biomass that was supported by things like grasses and other sources to instead a tremendous predatory pressure on insects. And in particular, from a single predator so there's not even a, a diversity of predation. So the natural result is a correspondingly strong evolutionary pressure on insects to evolve an appearance that specifically evokes a disgust response <laughs> in what's become now their overwhelmingly most significant predator as a defensive measure. Good, so. <laughs> like all good theories, this one makes predictions. Uh, most immediately, it says that modern bugs should be more disgusting than ancient ones. And indeed, this is easy to verify. Uh, I think we can all agree that modern bugs tend to <laughs> inspire feelings of revulsion, uh, whereas ancient ones, much less so. <laughs> but we can say more. Because of the shape of the human population growth curve, uh, with this explosion really in recent history, you can actually see strong effects on insect appearance even just within the last century or two. One way you can see that is it's reflected in changing human attitudes during that time. Uh, for instance, if you look at representative book titles over the decades. <laughs> so, the shift in attitude here is very clear, uh, driven, as I say, by this underlying change uh, in insect appearance. Uh, and of course, this trend continued uh, and in other media. <laughs> and it persists up to the present day. <laughs> now, this is indirect evidence, right? But we can do this rigorously and quantitatively. So in order to do that, uh, I collected uh, representative images of bugs, uh, roughly one per decade over the last 230 so years. Uh, and I conducted a study in which I uh, presented experimental subjects with these images in randomized order and asked them to rate each one on a scale from zero to 10 according to how disgusting they found it. And here are the results. Thank you. And just to be clear, these are the actual results of that actual study. <laughs> this is an incredibly powerful and consistent trend. Now, things actually get even more interesting. Uh, if we look at the actual human population growth curve, <laughs> it's actually not that great a fit, right? I mean, there's a high correlation, but uh, the shape of the curve doesn't match the best fit line for the data. Uh, and the reason for that is that actually the picture is a little bit more complicated. It's not just the number of humans that's driving this change in insect appearance. Uh, if that were the only factor, you'd expect these two curves to be a much closer match. What's also important is the human response to insect appearance. 
which is also changing. <laughs> because we're experiencing our own pressures of increasing population and decreasing food availability, and there exists this terrific available resource. And the obstacle to our using it, of course, is obvious, right? I mean, the thought of eating bugs is repulsive. But we are now starting to turn the full weight of human ingenuity upon that problem. Because if there's one thing that humans are really good at, if a resource exists, no matter how inaccessible, <laughs> we will find a way to exploit it. <laughs> and so we're now seeing an increasing number of companies that are working to bring insects into our daily diets as a regular and acceptable component. Uh, just a few weeks ago, was the first North American conference on entomophagy. Uh, a new peer-reviewed scholarly journal starts publication next year. So all of this is happening. Okay? And at the same time, the human population keeps increasing. Right? It's projected to increase well past the end of the century. Uh, and so there's this evolutionary arms race going on in which the stakes of the tug of war keep increasing. Right, so this is precisely the, the Red Queen situation that Tomer described earlier. Uh, you've got, in this case, an arms race between bugs to keep getting more disgusting and humans to keep overcoming that. <laughs> so to predict the future of this arms race, I constructed a simple uh, coevolutionary model. <laughs> to take into account changes in both the appearance of bugs and the human response. Now, unfortunately, uh, time doesn't permit me to discuss the mechanics of the model in full detail. <laughs> but I'll share with you the results. And the model almost precisely... The model almost precisely captures the observed empirical trend. <laughs> so among other things, that means that we can, with high confidence, make quantitative predictions about the future. Right? <laughs> we can say numerically just how bad things are going to get <laughs> as a function of time. And so I will close with an artist's conception based on this model. <laughs> of the kind of thing that we can conservatively look forward to encountering on a daily basis just a few short decades from now. <laughs>